Hey guys, this video is going to be about finding the pH of monoprotic acids. So monoprotic, that means one proton. So that means it just has one acidic hydrogen. All right, so an acid like HCl or HNO2, those are both monoprotic acids. Um, so there's special ways to finding the pH of these. So let's look at that. All right, so finding the pH of a strong acid. So the first thing you have to do is determine whether the acid is strong or weak. And if it's strong, then this is the method that you would use. So remember that strong acids dissociate 100%. The pH is the negative log of the concentration of H, and the hydrogen and hydronium concentrations are the same. All right, so if we're going to find the pH of these, and it also wants us to find the concentration of hydroxide and the pOH, then I'm going to start off with A. All right, HCl is a strong acid, and so in water it will dissociate completely to give us all hydronium and all chloride. All right, and if we have 0.25 molar of this, then that means it completely dissociates and we have zero left of this and we end up with 0.25 molar of hydronium and 0.25 molar of chloride because it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio. So every one of these turns into one of these and one of those. All right, and so if I wanted to find the pH, I'm going to take the negative log of the 0 0.25 and that is going to give me 0 0.60 for my pH. And then the pOH, remember pH plus pOH add together to give us 14. So if I take 14 and I subtract 0.6 from it, I get 13.40 for my pOH. And then to get my OH, remember that 10 to the negative pOH is equal to the concentration of hydroxide. So I'm just going to take 10 to the negative 13.40, and that ends up giving me 4.0 times 10 to the negative 14 molar, and that's hydroxide. All right, and then for B, so this is A, and then B is we've got HNO3, and HNO3 is a strong acid, so when in water it dissociates 100% to give us hydronium and nitrate, and if we have 3.25 times 10 to the negative third, it all turns into hydronium, hydronium, and nitrate. Both have the same concentration. So my pH is the negative log of the hydronium, and that ends up being 2.488. And then the pOH is 14 minus that, and that ends up being 11.512. And then the hydroxide is going to be equal to 10 to the negative 11.512, and that is 3.08 times 10 to the negative 12 molar. All right, and then part C, we have perchloric acid, and perchloric is a strong acid as well, so all I have to do is take the negative log of that 0 0.050, and that'll give me my pH. So the pH is 1.3, because all of this dissociates into hydronium and perchlorate. So this concentration is just the hydronium concentration or the hydrogen concentration. And then the pOH is going to be 12.70. And then the hydroxide concentration is equal to 10 to the negative 12.70. And so that is going to be 2.0 times 10 to the negative 13. All right, so strong acids, pretty straightforward. It's the same uh, calculations that you've been doing. You don't have to do really anything extra because all of these dissociate completely. Remember, this is only with monoprotic acids, so it only has one hydrogen in it. If it has more than one hydrogen, um, there's some other things you have to consider. All right, so weak acid KAs, and we talked about these briefly in the last video, but remember that these acids dissociate only partially, so it's in equilibrium, right? Um, so if we have this weak acid, this just arbitrary acid, HA, uh, in water, it produces hydronium and the conjugate base, but it's in equilibrium here, so it doesn't completely dissociate. And the K basically tells us how far it dissociates. The bigger the Ka, the more of this, and the lower the pH. So the stronger the acid, right? The bigger the Ka, 
the more it dissociates, the more it goes this way, and that means that the better acid it is. All right, and so if we write the Ka expression for it, we would have H plus or hydronium, depending on which equation you use, um, times the conjugate base over the original acid at equilibrium. Remember, these are all at equilibrium, okay? All right, so if we look at these, which acid is stronger, HF or acetic? Which do you expect to have a lower pH? And find the pH for one molar solution of each, and which do you expect, oh, that's twice, so we don't need that the second time. Okay, so if we look at them beforehand, um, which acid is stronger? So I'm going to say, so here is HF, and here is acetic. Right, and so HF has a bigger Ka, it's larger here because it's negative 4 and this is negative 5, so negative 4 is bigger. And so that means that it is stronger and it will have a lower pH because the, more, the stronger it is, the lower the pH because acids have a low pH. All right, and so if you want to find the actual pH for each of them, um, HF does not dissociate completely in water. It's in equilibrium because it has a K associated with it, right? So since it doesn't dissociate completely, one molar is not the concentration of the hydronium. So you can't just take the negative log of this with weak acids. That's why it's so important that you know which acids are weak and which acids are strong. So we have to use equilibrium. We have to use a rice table. And so initially I have one molar of this. Water doesn't matter because it's a liquid. It's not in the K. And I don't have any of this initially, so we're pretending like this doesn't happen immediately. It really does happen immediately, though. All right, and so this goes away, and this comes up because you can't subtract from a zero. So this is x, and this is x, and we get 1 minus x. So these are my equilibrium values, and my Ka expression for this is going to be hydronium times fluoride divided by HF, and remember these are all at equilibrium, so I'm just going to plug these equilibrium values into the K. So I have X times X divided by 1 minus X, and that's going to be equal to the Ka down here from this table, and it's 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth because this is HF. So I'm going to use the HF value. All right, so before we do this, there's one thing that I want to explain to you. Um, if we were to solve this expression for x the way that it's written right now, it would be a quadratic equation and you'd have to do a bunch of math. Um, but there's something special going on here. So if I have 1 minus x, okay, so that's what's in the denominator right now. And let's say my x is really, really small, like um, 0 0.003 small. I'm going to subtract from 1.0 that 0.003. Well, what I end up getting from that is 0 0.997, right? And here, if we're subtracting, we're going to round to the least number of decimal places. Well, the decimal place is right here that we would round to. And so this would round right back to 1.0. So we didn't lose anything. That means that this x, because the number is so tiny, is completely negligible from the equation. It's not going to affect the equation. It's not going to affect x. And so in all of these, because our k's are so small for most equilibrium uh, acids, because the k's are so small, we can essentially get rid of this x. And so that's what they do. They make sure that it's small enough for you to be able to get rid of it. So you will be able to get rid of this x in every single one of these problems. All right, so that x goes away. And so what we end up having is we have x squared because we have x times x over 1 is equal to 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4 because we got rid of that x in the bottom. So this is, this is still a quadratic equation, but you don't have to use the quadratic formula to, to figure it out. So 1 times 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4 is 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4, and that's equal to x squared. And then we're going to take the square root of both sides to get rid of the square. And what you end up getting for that is 0 0.0268. And so remember, your X is the hydronium and fluoride concentration. Since we want to find the acid, the pH of this, we have to take the negative log of X. So the pH would be equal to negative log of 0 
and that's going to be 1.57. So that's the pH of HF. And then I'm going to do acetic acid over here. I'm just going to get rid of this stuff. So we have H, C2, H3, O2 in water, and it dissociates to give us H3O and acetate. All right, and then we have 1.0 molar for this initially. Water doesn't matter. None of this and none of this. And so this comes up by X and this goes down. So the Ka expression for this is going to be H3O plus times H or C2H3O2 negative over acetic acid. And these are all at equilibrium. So that means if we plug all of our equilibrium values in, we have X times X divided by 1.0 minus X is equal to, and I'm going to use the Ka for acetic acid, is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. And just like with the hydrofluoric acid, we can get rid of this X. It's negligible. And so we end up with X squared is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, because we're just multiplying that 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth by 1, because that's what's in the denominator. That's what's left. So my X is then equal to 4.24 times 10 to the negative third. And if we take the negative log of that, because this is the H3O, we end up getting the pH is equal to 2.37. So what does that tell me? That tells me that this is the stronger acid, which I already knew that because it has a lower Ka, but it's the stronger acid because I mean, it's showing us that it's stronger acid because it has a lower pH. So this has a bigger Ka than this does. And so therefore, it's a stronger acid. It has a lower pH, right? And so let's just say we had a 1.0 molar HCl solution. And we wanted to know the pH of that. Well, we'd simply just, because this dissociates completely because it's strong, so the negative log of 1 is 0. So the pH of this acid would be zero. It's much stronger. So even though all three of these acids had a had the same concentration starting out, they give completely different pHs because the weak acids don't dissociate to the same degree. The strong acids dissociate 100%, weak acids do not, and they have a Ka that's associated with it. So you have to use it and you have to find the concentration of the acid at equilibrium. All right, let's do another one. All right, so we want the pH of 0.1 molar hypochlorous acid. And so hypochlorous acid is weak. It has a Ka that's given to you. That's how you know it's weak, that or you memorize them. All right, and then a rice table. So it's going to increase on this side. It's going to decrease on this side. And then our equilibrium values are that. And the Ka for this is the concentration of hydronium times the concentration of hypochlorite divided by the concentration of hypochlorous acid. And so if I plug all of this into here, because it's at equilibrium, the Ks are always at equilibrium, and there's my Ka. If I plug all of that in, I end up getting 3.5 times 10 to the negative 8 is equal to x times x divided by 0 0.1 minus x. And again, this x is going to be so small that it's completely negligible, so we can get rid of it. So then I will have x squared divided by 0 0.1 is equal to 3.5 times 10 to the negative 8. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 0.1 to get rid of that denominator. And I end up with 3.5 times 10 to the negative ninth is equal to x squared. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And my x is equal to 5.92 times 10 to the negative fifth. And then, and that is my hydronium. So if I take the negative log of that, right, that's this, and I'm looking for the pH. So I'm going to take the negative log of 5.92 times 10 to the negative fifth, and the pH is 4.23. All right, one very, very short concept before this is finished. 
and it's percent dissociation. It's exactly what it sounds like. You take to find the percent dissociation, the amount that it dissociated, divided by the amount that it started at, and times 100, right? So it's basically the concentration of H or hydronium divided by HA times 100. So we're going to compare the dissociation of a 0.1 molar hypochlorous acid to a 1 molar hypochlorous acid. And for this one right here, we just did that example on the previous slide, and we found that 0.1 molar HClO creates 5.92 times 10 to the negative fifth molar H plus or hydronium. So to find the percent dissociation for that one, we're going to take the 5.92 because that's the H. And we're going to divide it by 0 0.10 because that's what it started at and multiply by 100. And so what we end up getting is 0.0592%. So it doesn't dissociate very much at that concentration. All right, and then so for the next one, I'm going to have to find out how much it dissociates. So HClO plus H2O makes hydronium and hypochlorite and we're starting at one molar and so this is going to go up in concentration on this side and we'll lose concentration over here so I have x squared because it's x times x divided by 1 minus x is equal to 3.5 times 10 to the negative eighth this x remember is negligible so we get rid of it and so then x squared is equal to 3.5 times 10 to the negative 8, take the square root of both sides, and so x is equal to 1.87 times 10 to the negative 4th. And then to find the percent dissociation for that, I'm going to take my x value here, and 1.87 times 10 to the negative 4th divided by 1, because that's our initial, right? That's our initial concentration. And remember, it's initial over how much it dissociates, or how much it dissociates over initial. And so I get 1.87 times 10 to the negative 2, or 0.0187%. Okay, so what does that tell me? So since the percent dissociation here is lower, this is a bigger number, right? But this is a smaller concentration. And so what that tells me is as the concentration of the acid increases for a weak acid, the percent dissociation decreases. So let's write that down because that's really important and then we'll be finished here. Okay, so I'm gonna write it down at the very top as the concentration of a weak acid increases, the percent dissociation decreases. Okay, and that's because um, the, the bigger the number gets here, the less acid it can produce because they're weak acids. They don't make much of the hydrogen ion. All right, so that's it for this section. It takes a little bit of practice, but there's eventually you get to the point where you're not even writing rice tables out anymore. You're just putting it into the uh, Ka expression.